Hi, I'm Trevor with High Vis Shooting Systems. Today we're going to install our Tom Buster shotgun sight on this 870. Also, with this video, the rear sight that's included with this set is our TS type rear sight. So, this rear sight is common to our uh, Tom Buster sight set. The difference between this and our C series is the C series set comes with a magnetic front sight instead of a screw attach. We also sell the rear sight, our TS rear sight, separately. So, let's take a look at the parts that are involved in here and talk about how we're going to assemble the first the front sight and then how we install the rear sight. So these are all the parts that are included with the Tom Buster sight set. So here we have the front sight, attaches with a single screw. It also comes with this double sided adhesive that we will attach to the bottom of the front sight. This is the rear sight, that's the rear sight blade and this is the elevator for the elevation adjustment. Now with the Tom Buster, it comes with two rib adapters. These rib adapters fit a variety of rib widths. We have a narrow one here and a wide one. The narrow rib adapter will fit ribs from a quarter inch to about 9 30 seconds of an inch, which is what our 870 is. And then the wider one will go from 5 16 up to 3 8 So depending on the model of firearm you have, you would select the appropriate rib width adapter. Then the final parts that we have are threaded, non-threaded plates and screws. These we will use to clamp the rear sight around the rib of the shotgun. So now we're going to install the front sight. So with the double sided tape as we previously talked, with a razor I removed the brown strip on one side of the tape. This allows me to simply grab the white and just peel it off when I install the front sight. Now the front sight attaches with a single screw. The sight set also comes with five different thread sizes for the front sight. We're working on an 870 Remington. Remington standard thread size is a 648. This is the largest of the five screw sizes. So here I have my 648 thread in my front sight. Let's install it on the shotgun. We start by peeling the white off of the back of the sight, exposes the double sided tape. We're going to just place the sight loosely on a rib, set the screw in place, get it started. When you install the sight on your firearm, you will want to place a low strength thread locker on this screw. We want to hold the sight centered on the rib while we tighten the screw. Now since we just loosely place this on here, now we want to press it down to get that double sided tape to stick and that's a complete installation of the front sight. So now we're going to take both shotgun adapters we have. Now these adapters are not sized specifically to one size rib, they fit a range of rib width, but clearly this one's much wider than the rib we're working on. So we'll select this other one that is much tighter, almost a perfect fit on the rib. So you want to position this spacer with the narrow end facing the receiver. We also want to pay attention to these pillars that connect the rib to the barrel. So now that we've selected the proper adapter for the rib, we're just going to set that on the rib. Now we have to determine where we're going to mount the rear sight. The distance between the front and rear sight is reasonably critical. If you get it too close, you're going to, not going to have proper adjustment. But what's more important is the more sight radius you have, the easier it is to shoot accurately. So you want to select a spot to mount the rear sight that's as far back on the rib as reasonably possible. Now when we look at these ribs, and there are some variants in different shotgun manufacturers, but all shotguns are going to get larger back towards the chamber, and the vent area is going to get narrower. Now this does a couple things. One, when we mount the sight, if we try to mount the sight too far back on the barrel, we won't have enough room to get our fasteners between the vent rib and the barrel to attach it. So we're going to select this slot right here to mount our rear sight. And once we get the sight attached to the barrel with the screws and all in place loose, we're going to slightly slide it up to contact this pillar. If you mount it in the center of these two pillars, under recoil, eventually that sight's going to make its way up there anyway. So we're just going to mount it, slide it up tight here, then tighten down the fasteners. We want the narrow end of the adapter facing the receiver, and the rear sight sits right where these two screw holes are. So let's set our adapter down, set our rear sight on there like so. You'll find three plates included with this rear sight. Two of them have threaded holes, one has no threaded holes. So the non-threaded plate will sit just in front of the blade. The two threaded plates we will slip between the ribs and then the screws will go down on each side and clamp it to the rib. So we're going to slide one plate through here. So if you have your gun mounted in a vise or in a gun cleaning rest or something that will hold it this way, it's very easy to install this because once you install all these loose parts, they'll sit there by themselves. Now we're ready to install the screws. You'll just want to select the screw that's appropriate length because rib widths or rib thicknesses on shotguns do vary. So 
So the sight's a little loose, so like I said, I'm gonna slide it up to where it contacts that pillar that connects the rib to the barrel. And the blade of this particular sight, where the two mount screws go through in the back, is slotted, and this will be our windage adjustment. But for now, we're just gonna keep it centered and snug our screws down. Now you don't really have to over tighten these. If you continue to tighten them, you will actually end up bending the threaded plates so that the two sides of the threaded plates bend up. That's not really an issue if you do that. That actually kind of contours them slightly to the underside of the rib. Some ribs have some strange features on the bottom side may require you to tighten them up to that point. So now the side is tight to the barrel. This nylon adapter, once you start tightening it, really bites down on the ribs, especially ribs that have serrations on the top, so it tends to stay in place. Now we're gonna install our elevator. So here we have a stepped elevator. You have a tall side and a short side. You always want to insert the tall side first. So now we just lift up on the site and it has spring tension down on the elevator. And I'm gonna install it to the center and that's where I'm gonna start with my side in. So now we have our rear side installed, front side installed. We're ready to go to the range.